we have like a terrible air advisory because of all the shit happening in Canada. So literally it looks oh, all the like smoke fog. is coming down. Yeah, it looks like there's fog everywhere, but it's terrible air. So I can't have the windows open in the office. It's 90 degrees today. So I'm like, well, I don't want to die from the air. I don't want to die from the heat. So I'm going to be out here because it's much cooler. So, so the lesson is you're just going to die no matter what. And Prepare for the is, inevitable. And for and for that, everybody, welcome to the Razzcast. 15, episode 15. It's been, it's been a little bit. It's mainly been me. This episode was supposed to come out like earlier last week by the time. Yeah, as, uh, as Taylor Swift says, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Hey, you know, when you're both both ears get infections and you can't hear for shit and then yesterday was the first time you were able to open your ears up it was a revelation yeah but, you know your dad always said open your ears brian open your ears and you're like dad i'm sick i can't help it this he is said, really no you're not sick you're just an idiot and you're like dad i already know that that i'm just gonna ignore your joke that works out pretty well though because this is where we shot with my dad this is the last time that i was in this location so you weren't in that location though but anyways i will say it actually kind of works that some time has passed because some stuff's been coming out a little bit like some certain stuff's been happening with uh our topic oh by the way uh reason why i bring that up is every time we do something that's topical i keep looking at myself I should look at the camera. Every time we do something that's topical, it always gets fucked up. Like, you know that Nintendo Direct? Do you see that Anna Pernia uh, conference? Stray's coming to Xbox. All that stuff happened. Uh, cat game. <laughs> All that shit happened after Summer Game Fest. So uh, it's cool that we kind of had some time because some stuff's come out about Spider-Man. Some stuff has happened with The Flash and the DCU. Uh, but yeah, comic book movie fatigue. Uh, I left it general because I know some people say comic book movie fatigue, superhero movie fatigue. I think that is the most interesting part that I think we're going to get into with the difference between both of those. Um, I don't know if we want to start with like what we think. Um, I feel like no one has any idea what they're doing anymore. <laughs> That's the main problem with everything. The only... And we'll get into it. The only area that I feel is comfortable that knows what they're doing currently is Spider-Verse because they had already set themselves up. Um, otherwise, like, yeah, Marvel's on fire. DC's on fire. Sony's always on fire. Otherwise. But they just go, but they just go with it. They don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, they don't care. Did you see the trailer for Craven the Hunter? They do not care. No, they don't. Um, I do kind of agree with that sentiment. There, there's, like you said, we're going to get into it. I think my main focus on this is just a quality thing. Now, obviously, in the thumbnail, I, we were talking about this when Guardians, Flash, Spider-Verse, all this stuff was coming out. Those are the three posters in the thumbnail. I, whether, I know two of them we agree pretty much to the, even though you think a little highly than i do one of them i like more than you but i don't think any of them are super besides spider verse maybe i don't think guardians or flash are real i don't think they work for this conversation whether or not you like them or not because i think they're very different obviously one is a business thing and then another is they're so far removed from what comic book movies are that i don't think that kind of counts towards the conversation and then flash it's the end of almost the end because aquaman still has to come out but it's kind of the end of what dc was trying to do so i don't even think flash counts like that uh and then it was funny because even before talking about this all i thought to myself is wait a minute it's not just dc and marvel we got like hellboy stuff we have like you know, they do like Frank Miller stuff, like with the three hundreds and the Watchmen. I it, I know that wasn't Frank Miller, but like uh <laughs> City. Um, they do like those weird one-off ones with like the kitchen. Remember that? 
with all the women comedians and it bombed and people said it was bad. So it's like <laughs> a lot more to comic book movies. It's, it, it's mainly a superhero thing where I think it's more superhero fatigue than comic book movie because we've been seeing different kinds of movies that even if you like or dislike, they kind of switch things up and bring different audiences in. Um, but I will say we are at a, a point now where I think DC's going the way it's going. Marvel, we'll get into them. And then, like you said, like with Spider-Verse, that seems to be the only real creative outlet that it seems very focused straight to the point. But when that's done, like, where are they going from that? It's a grim outlook on comic book movies. And I think Eric and I have been so, we've had some odd takes too on movies the past couple of years when it comes to comic book movies. So I think this is a good conversation for us because I don't think him and I like sit in like, oh, well, comic book movies, it's over. Or like, yeah, comic book movies are still great. Shut up. Like we sit in a very logical spot i feel like so but yeah i mean there's been some really good stuff to come from the studios is the thing we're not going to deny that it's just that you know when you're trying to continue your universe and uh you kind of ended where your storyline was at and then you said let's keep going and release a bunch of you know fine television shows and a lot of mediocre movies and then you have the other studio that's like, uh, we need to re restructure our entire, uh, our entire, uh, you know, head of chief development four different times. Mm -hmm. um, go through a buyout, go through another thing, go through another. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, yeah. Well, at least we got the Batman. <laughs> Don't that worry, is... that's not affected. <laughs> yeah, that. I guess, you know, let's just get into it because I think that's a really good jumping off point. So I think I'm not going to spend too much time. I think it's more important now, but I think there is a context where when you really think about it, comic book media is decades and decades old. We go to George Reeves. We go to the Wonder Woman TV show. We go to the Incredible Hulk TV show. Like, adam west batman so it's like this isn't something where blade comes out or like tim burton's batman and it becomes a thing right so comic book media has always been a thing and obviously back in the day it was what it was it was cheap it's memorable but it was this like you know cheap content and it was what it was and i think when the first superman came out was really when even though that was still in an era where it was still goofy and fun and campy that was when I think people understood you can do something really cool from this material because up until this point books haven't adapted for ages you know like it's adapting stuff is not that new excuse me so with comic books like once we saw that we got Tim Burton's Batman and then, you know, the not 80s and 90s kind of like those kind of all died down. Blade movies were a thing. All the Roger Corman, like Fantastic Four, Captain America, like those were things. But then we got Marvel going under and then they had to sell their properties. And then we got, you know, great Spider-Man, great Spider-Man, eh. Great X-Men, great X-Men, eh. And then like, you know, the Fantastic Four, like it was a hot mess. And I really feel like the real idea of comic book or superhero fatigue is this whole cinematic universe thing. Because mm -hmm. at that time, we were getting a lot of content. And I think when X-Men and Spider-Man were coming out, there was this next shift of, oh, okay, like these can actually be very grounded, good material that you're pulling from stuff. Again, those are definitely movies that you can go back to there's a lot of great stuff. I'll still defend the Raimi Spider-Mans, but definitely like the X-Men movies, there are some like great parts. There's some bad parts. Um, you know, you have auteur. You know who directed them. Yeah, we don't bring up. Yeah, we won't. We won't bring up that stuff. That That's well, and who directed the third one too. Um, but <laughs> like we have auteurs who do these, you know, like Christopher Nolan or Guillermo del Toro. So it's like 
comic books and and like obviously like ghost world i think was the one that had scarlett johansson where like that's known as like one of the best comic book movies i know um paul giamatti did one like american something so it's like we are getting all that weird stuff and you know we mm-hmm. look at comic book movies like teenage mutant ninja turtles technically is comic book movies like that's it's but we know it as a property now it's not like a comic book it's a property right so this whole conversation is all over the place because there's so many weird things that are included and obviously i don't think all of them count towards superhero movie fatigue um because we're not getting a teenage mutant ninja turtle movie every year right so this is the first one in what like Seven the live years. action one since the 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 um Michael, Michael Bay. Bay one, yeah. So you know they're they're going for the animation style because I wonder if they're trying to be like, well, we could we could make our own Spider Verse, you know, animated movie thing, and you it know? looks good. It looks cool. I actually and it's, I like how they're teenagers. <laughs> TMNT has always been a series that I don't like prop it up like that, but for whatever reason, I love them. I don't know why. Like, it's weird. It's this weird connection I have. But I am excited for the movie. So, but that kind of comes to the point of what is, like, is it as simple to pinpoint as just bad movies, right? Because you think about with Marvel, in my opinion, up until, we'll say, uh, Far From Home, because that was the end of their whole, like, that was kind of their epilogue to phase three that was like their way of Mm -hmm. like okay we're gonna just go to a nice fun note let's you know we're done there were some bad ones and i don't know and i you might disagree with me on the bad ones but overall like there wasn't so many that you can go oh yeah oh yeah but what were we giving it a pass because of the mentality is it because everything felt like it led like I think a lot of what people have a problem with phase four and all this shit about is like, what are you trying to do? Like at least in the beginning, even if the movies weren't great, you could kind of get an idea of like, you know, at least where it's going. Whereas now it's like, it's just this, it's like, everything is everywhere. And they're, and they're kind of doing a DC move where they're like, just throw this at the wall, throw that at the wall. Whereas before it's like, okay, like we got, Iron Man one through three, Captain America one through three, Thor like, and like Doctor Strange, and you know maybe some of those were good, some of them were not, but you always knew like okay we're getting to this point, to this point, to this point. So is it just unwieldy? Is it just again bad product? Like everyone's you know the whole it's like the Western all over again, which is like funny to me. <laughs> Like that whole thing of like when the Western died, but let's be honest, the Westerns kind of died because of Heaven's Gate. One singular movie just destroyed the Western genre. So I don't think, I don't know what one movie, I mean, The Flash has been very uh, polarizing, but again, I don't think- But no one's seeing it. (laughs) Yeah, but no one's seeing it. So it's like, it's not, I don't think that's going to affect anything. Um, Yeah, it's like bizarre. Cause yeah, um, well, well, I mean, because again, you go talk about everything that happened during that those first three phases, and when you reflect on it, you're like, wow, there really wasn't like too many bad movies, but there were there were a couple stinkers in there too, and you're like, oh did we give it a pass or not? Because I remember, you know, the bad rep that uh, that Thor Dark World got. I remember the bad rep that uh, the Iron Man 3 got. Um, I remember, you know, I mean, people dissing on the original, like, Thor and Captain America, and they're like, oh, these aren't that great. And then Avengers came out, and they, I, they forgot about those. They just said, who cares? Hmm. You know, because Avengers, biggest one of the biggest blockbusters of all time. Um, Avengers Age of Ultron kind of meh you know uh, even during that phase three you know Doctor Strange was kind of eh um, Guardians 2 a lot of people are mixed on that one um, and then like uh, Ant-Man you know and Ant-Man 2 
and Ant Man three now. You know, Ant Man's just never really been that great. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, like really in realistic terms, I mean, again, like we can agree to disagree. Is Captain America really the only series that, in realistic terms, you can look at every movie and go, "I think he's had the best"? Because I would say Cap is easily. Like, because Iron Man to me went like this. Thor was like this. And then we, we were two of like the rare people that really like the new Thor. Um, but mm-hmm. really other than that, like, it seems like Cap was always kind of the stable. And obviously Cap's stories too were always very like, they felt like Avengers point, like, 1.5 like even with winter soldier like the way that it's obviously not civil war i that, mean it, things that happened in winter soldier direct directly caused into uh age of ultron like with the whole dysfunction a, of shield and everything you think too like i think a lot of this conversation too comes from this was not really a thing we had so the fact that we gave it more room was more so because it didn't feel as frequent And it was just kind of like, okay, cool. And then once we started to get an understanding of them building something, we were like, oh, okay, this is kind of unique. So it's like once Endgame happens, you sort of just sit back and go, okay, so this has happened. And then we're going to do, like, from what it seems like, it's they're going to do the same exact storyline again. Well, we'll see how that goes because... (laughs) As of today, as of us filming, there's other craziness going on with all that Jonathan Major stuff. So, but like your favorite person. We don't have to get into that. <laughs> that's a whole that's another conversation. Um, but no, because I agree with you, where like you really look back at the MCU and it just is sort of like we, I mean, we did a whole conversation when we did our Avengers gameplay where we even gave kind of our mini reviews mm-hmm. um, and our look at the way things went in the universe, in the Marvel universe. And it just, I don't know. Like, I think the fatigue is more difficult to settle on one thing. I think it's a lot because it just seems like we've seen it before. It feels like, the things that are trying to be different, they're not different enough. Like when we talk about like Doctor Strange 2, where like, in my opinion, Shang-Chi is one of the better examples of it's it's a Marvel movie. It does most of what Marvel movies do. But for the most part, I watch it and I don't feel like it clearly seems like Marvel said, I'm going to do whatever. Doctor Strange 2, now obviously I think my, my, I don't, I gave it, like we talk about our letterbox scores a lot, even though my review is a little higher than yours, I don't think that's still the same, because I think I just came out of it enjoying it, that movie feels like two different movies, it's a Sam Raimi movie for one minute, and then it's a Marvel movie the next, and it's just, where Shang-Chi felt like this feels like a director's movie, but you could tell it's still a big budget Marvel movie, but I, it was fine. Like I really enjoyed mm-hmm. it. But again, Shang-Chi being probably one of the main highlights of this newer phase. And it's up there with a movie that basically- the phase is over. We forget about that. That, that phase is over, even though it feels like it's still in the same phase. Yeah, well, yeah. Cause we're in like what? Five, Cause Ant-Man started five. Right? Ant-Man started five, yeah. They just said that. They were just like, yeah, Wakanda Forever is the last of of phase four. And you're like, what? And that's the way you end it? (laughs) (laughs) That's the way you end it? Well, and then phase four was a lot of the shows, too, where, again, I just brought up to Jade. I go, you know know what's funny? Besides She-Hulk, I could tell you right now, I would have at least said all the other shows were good to great. I think two of them I remember. Like, specifically. Like, I love Miss Marvel for the style it's typical, but I love the way it looked and I love the vibe. And then Loki, which we agree on. I'm telling you right now, I don't remember really much about all the other ones. I really liked Moon Knight. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only one I distinctly remember is Loki. Um, of course, people you know will rave about uh, WandaVision 
And I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I really like the first three episodes. Oh, I was going to say, really, up until the last three or two episodes, I thought that show was excellent. Like I thought, um, I, 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 I distinctly remember, you know, episode five of Moon Knight. Um, you say you say you like the style. I do like the style too, Miss Marvel. I can't tell you what the fucking plot of it was. I don't remember anything that happened in that show. Well, that's why I remember it because it de- it was just I'm learning to be superhero. It also is like the movie Turning Red about, um, about different culturals, different cultures with women. And then the fifth episode does exactly what Moon Knight does, where they go, okay, so we're gonna go to the past real quick. We're gonna do a flashback episode, and then we're gonna come back. Okay, okay. And then, and then, and then <laughs> She Hulk. I, you know, distinctly remember just because of how you know not great it is. It sticks in your head, you know. Well, it sticks in my head that the best part of the show overshadowed She Hulk, which was our boy Charlie Cox. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, I, Hawkeye existed. Remember that? Yeah, Kingpin. Uh, yeah, wow. Kingpin's back. Yeah. Uh, what if was terrible? Yeah, it's like, but like, again, is it just an oversaturation thing? Because, like we just said, this is the same thing that Marvel did before. Like, it's not like I really don't think, genuinely, for the most part, I don't feel like Marvel has been doing this thing where they're like, we're just gonna, we're gonna, do this we're, we're gonna make an r-rated joker movie like they're not like dc like i definitely feel like they at least know what they want to do but it's the problem just it's too much because... i feel like i mean again i feel like it is definitely let's we need to get something out every three months and then between like movie wise and then between those three months we need to pump out six episodes of a series uh you know that was all 2021 2022 that was all they did because i mean we got fortunate that you know we started off with the tv series which were fine um you know it's just like that and then eventually we got the wonderful wonderful movie black widow you know to be the first movie of phase four um dumbest decision they could have ever made honestly that was probably one of the dumbest decisions um but i think the problem is too is that you're now relying on your audience to not only you know keep up with everything that's coming out but to now be like okay the tv shows are a part of it because now we're throwing it into the movies because so many people were so confused with dr strange 2 about why the hell wanda's evil also to be fair they didn't watch the show because now you have your writers also writing projects and working on these things when they haven't even seen the the other things in the universe. So now characters are not being written properly. Um, I'm probably not going to say that's what happens with the Marvels because it sounds like everything seems fine with that. Um, but I mean, they it's not like they haven't done that before because they filmed they filmed an uh, end game before Captain Marvel. So, you know, they didn't know what they were doing with uh, Captain Marvel at all. And that's why she's barely in Endgame, to be fair, because they didn't know what they were doing with her. Exactly. Um, I mean, and that's fine because that movie's just meh. Yeah. Not because Brie Larson's in the movie. Yeah, we're not we're not that kind of YouTube channel. <laughs> Bug. Of all the simps. She she talks bad about men. It's like okay, you could say she's an idiot and move on with your fucking life. <laughs> Maybe that's why no one saw Fast X in the states. I saw clips of Aquaman though, and it, I'm mad that I didn't see it in theater because he looks so crazy. <laughs> but like you brought up a good point, so you brought up the Marvels, and it feels like with comic book movies lately it almost feels like like and especially with marvel it's almost a do a marvel movie or b we'll let you do what you want and either a we're either gonna force you to do other things or you could do whatever you want so either a we're gonna force you to do what we want dr strange 2 or do whatever the fuck you want thor 4 (laughs) 
and e, both of them do not get the best reception either way. The like, only person yeah. I feel like that got away with getting it, able to do whatever they want was James Gunn with Guardians. But that's yeah. because it's so far away from everything else, literally and figuratively, <laughs> that he was just able to tell his own story and things like that. Now, say what you will about like whatever happened in, with, with your opinions on Guardians 3. I mean, a lot of critics didn't like it, but the audience seems to really be fans of it. I'm shocked. Um, like, when the reviews started coming out, and of course, I got nervous, and I didn't get nervous because of, like, because he, not preconceived notions of James Gunn, just more of, like, oh, great, are we going to get another, like, Marvel movie, whatever, and I remember watching it, and all I thought to myself was, granted, it is not the greatest thing on the face of the planet. I was just sort of, like, this feels so refreshing. Like, it looks good. I thought, like, it didn't feel over the top. Like, I like that it ends in a way where it's not, like, crazy, crazy, crazy. Like, it felt personal. It, you know, I will admit there is parts of it that seem odd because it feels like, like, I think Red Letter Media said, it kind of just feels like a Guardians of the Galaxy TV show where it's like, we have to save Rocket. But then at the end of the movie, it kind of suddenly becomes, oh, this is the last movie of the trilogy. So it's like, but I don't care because it's not like, I don't care about that. Like that none of that makes the movie bad, but it does feel like it. But other than that, like the villain was good. It felt like it was doing things, you know, it was doing things you didn't know, but there was a fun artistic flair that was fresh and original. And again, like you said, that's why I don't consider it with Marvel because it doesn't impact. I mean, it's kind of the same thing with No Way Home where the impact is so over here, but yet these are probably the two gems of these recent couple years of mm -hmm. Marvel movies. And it's like wild to me. <laughs> yeah. And they're both so strong on their own that they don't need to correlate with the rest of the universe. Like sure. Of course, Doctor Strange is in no way home. But that's a like, so but that was a Sony like deal thing. They always yeah, they, you have, they needed they have an MCU have, character. Yeah, because in the first one it was Iron Man and, and in Far From Home was Nick Fury. This one's Doctor Strange. Who knows what the next one's gonna be? We have no idea, especially with the writer's strike going on right now, you know, everything. And that's another thing too, because you know, we're in the midst of the writer's strike currently. Everything so Marvel pushed. Everything's been pushed except for Deadpool. <laughs> is, yeah, they're currently Which shooting. Which is ironic. Yeah. Because of X-Men Origins. And Echoes coming out all on Thanksgiving. Loki season two is scheduled. So it's like, are yeah, they? Yeah, well, and I mean, <laughs> and then we're, we're currently in the midst of Secret Invasion coming out. At this time of recording, only episode two is dropped. And I don't know if you've watched the first episode yet. I, I haven't. Did. I know what happened. And I was just kind of like, like, it really I'll is. I'll tell you this. Nothing happens. I'm going to be honest. Nothing happens. You can't disrespect Robin Scherbatsky like that. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> like, the end happens. And that's about all that happens in the show. Like, it explains why Nick Fury comes back from space because they have to explain at the end of Far From Home. Oh, yeah, he's in space. Okay, he's back on Earth. What was he doing? And now they have to also explain, I guess, at the end of the show that he goes back up to space for the Marvels. Or I don't know if this takes place after the Marvels because they didn't make it 100% clear, but it sounds like it is because he looks like a hobo. And in the Marvels, he looks like Nick Fury. See, that's another thing is the fact that Secret Invasion came out and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's when it's not either is your reaction of just like, oh, yeah, Secret Invasion just came out. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched episode two yet and I don't know when I will. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was good that it, again that they pushed when Ant-Man came out and everyone hated it let's be real not not i don't know anyone that really likes that movie i don't know anyone that is very
Uh oh. Uh-oh. Much to like. Uh oh. It's fine. Uh-oh. I don't know anyone think that people love it, so it's own it. Like, there's a first it was like, and okay. I was like, so you're gonna really hate me? Can you repeat that? Because you literally froze, and then when your audio started, it was you literally going Ant Man three. So just just start your Ant Man three point over. I apologize. <laughs> No, I, I found it funny that you I I just saw your face frozen like oh, and I was like, yeah. oh. well your face was frozen for me too. <laughs> um so Ant Man three, a lot of people, you know, don't like. I don't know many people that even think that it's close to being okay for them. I just know that people are like, I don't like it to oh, this is one of the worst Marvel products to come out in years. Um, and it's funny because that's in its own like bubble and things like that, but it tries to like throw so much at you with so much nothing at the same time where like even, uh, a powerful performance from an actor that is not going to be in the series anymore doesn't even save it. Um, I, I don't know what happened with that movie to be fair. Um, but after that, Marvel's like, oh, crap, I guess we do have to, you know, focus on moving our projects around because, you know, they were about to launch Secret Invasion. Then they were about to launch a bunch of different shows. But I'm like, I don't know how that's going to save, like, that stuff that was supposed to come out this year is the thing. I can understand later down the line being like, OK, but like, I don't know how that's supposed to save the Marvels because that was already filmed. That was already shot. I don't know how that's supposed to save half the TV shows that were supposed to come out this year because those were already shot. I mean, unless you do a quick bunch of reshoots. I mean, I can understand the Marvels getting getting a bunch of reshoots in because they have plenty of time for that. But I don't think that would save its script if because I we don't know what the script is going to be like. Uh, it sounds like the script is going to be goofy, um, and we can only hope that you know it's interesting because that would save it from the last Captain Marvel movie because the last one just wasn't interesting. Well, you say you say interesting. And let's talk about a man. Let's let's change let's this shit because I think Marvel there's kind of a lock on Marvel. Let's talk about a man who loves a man who invented bombs and in this process also bombed a company from being able to do what Marvel did. And that is Christopher Nolan. <laughs> Christopher yeah. Nolan destroyed the DCEU is what you're saying. I mean, let's be fair. He was doing his Batman movies, which are probably more interesting and unique and creative than most of what's been put out. DC's like, fuck, the Avengers, co- we want to do this. And Chris is like, nah. <laughs> so DC... Uh, yeah. So Chris, you know, obviously Nolan gave us the great Dark Knight trilogy, uh, and then it sort of became the Zack Snyder verse, right? Which was one of seven different universes that the DC uh, EU has been through. Um, and since <laughs> then we got Zack Snyder. Then it was, we're going to take advantage of his daughter committing suicide and him leaving for us to disgustingly ruin Justice League uh, with Joss Whedon threatening every actor and actress. Um, (laughs) Then we got, we're not going to do Zack Snyder stuff anymore, but we're still going to do random characters and just throw everything at the wall. Then we got, okay, we're going to reboot it, but we're going to have Batgirl and Michael Keaton be Batman and do this. To then them getting bought out and then them saying, nah. Tax write off. Tax write off. To now finally, finally them being like, we're going to try and structure this and let James Gunn kind of do a new DCU. And to be fair, I really don't give a shit. (laughs) Like, I'm so, like, I watched that video and I'm sitting there. And I think at this point, with everything that we've talked about with Marvel, then seeing all that, and it's like a new, like there, it's the new beginning. It's just me going, 
I, I don't. And like, I had problems with some of the stuff he said, where the only problem I had with what James Gunn talked about was how he was trying to do this whole, yeah, and we're going to do video games and that's going to, and I'm like, do you not know how video games work? Like, first off, <laughs> video games don't take a year or two to just shit out Two, your actors are not going to like when they get this much pay compared to this from a game to a movie like mm -hmm. that shit besides the point that was the only part that really bothered me but that just came across as like i don't think he knows how that world works but it's it kind of just feels like marvel now it's just yeah we're gonna do games they're gonna connect and then we have our own tv shows and they're gonna connect and we're gonna do this and then like i love what james gunn did with guardians you cannot start a new DCU with like half of your shit stuff that is not even like B or C level. It's like E level. Like, like it seems so like Marvel gained our trust. And then they said, here's a talking raccoon and tree. <laughs> the fact that within a year or two, he wants all these weird shows and weird ideas to come out. I'm like, I mean, to be fair, he did say he's going to start it with Superman, which I think is a good idea. But I think also the aftermath of is Henry Cavill coming back? Oh, my God, he's back. Oh, my God, he dropped the Witcher to be Superman. Oh, never mind. Poor Henry. I feel so bad for him. <laughs> like, and then we he, obviously got Superman and Lois. I've never... I've never seen Superman in anything. I know Miss Maisel is Lois Lane, though. That's mm -hmm. all I know. <laughs> I mean, hey, if we're going to do the same route of casting a nobody again, because at the time, you know, 10 years ago, Henry Cavill wasn't really anyone. That's true. Well, and yeah. Now, we, now, we, now he's Daniel known Craig, as the guy who wouldn't shave his mustache. If Daniel Craig never existed, they said Henry Cavill would have been James Bond. So. Would have yeah. Been that's fair. But, and, but, it's okay. He got an Mission Possible instead. And... That's true. It's funny. <laughs> Clearly, he kept the mustache for the good movie, knowing that the Justice League reshoots were all BS. And then, oh, and then the whole Zack Snyder Justice League thing, which was like, there was like a good month where, I'm not going to lie, I didn't think it would happen. But the fact that it was received so well, I was sitting there going, are they going to do this fuck shit where they're going to keep doing what they're doing, but they're going to let him at least do. But obviously that kind of just became whatever, which yes, I was hopeful, not because I love Zack Snyder, but because watching that cut of Justice League, I was like, fuck you, Warner Brothers. Are you fucking joking me? Wow. <laughs> Who knew that you could make a solid story if you had four hours to work with it? To be fair, though, I think that's what saves the Justice League if they would have done that you know split into two parts and then keep it that way because again he had all that time to tell a plot yeah instead well, of you know i think, everything else that happened and honestly i think you could have easily shaved an hour because a lot of the action scenes again i take it as the movie is literally an uncut version so i don't get mad that stuff is long but you, you could have cut a gym. lot of the action stuff down you know, like, I get it. The plot is the same. And I'm not saying like, that version of Justice League is miles better because it's a more compelling story. No, it's the same story. It's like, but it's told in a more, it's, it has a good flow. I think the character beats are really interesting. The villain is not amazing, but at least they give him something more than just, oh, I get the boxes. Rah, rah, rah. Like they give him like a little bit of like. He also looks cooler. He looks cooler. So it's like there's all this shit where like watching it, it just made me go, oh, and then the ending where like Superman just doesn't come and save the day. They fuck up. They ruin it. And then it sets up the whole thing with Flash. And and then like in the original cut, they just make fun of Flash. And I mean, we can make fun of them now, but you know, for other reasons. Um, but like, <laughs> It just pissed me off watching it going, we could have gotten this cut down an hour, like a three hour movie that was pretty much this. This would have been great. I think this would have been like, okay, Zach, we'll give you a dark side part two Justice League. But again, that's mm -hmm. never going to happen, unfortunately. But 
Yeah, DC is in a predicament now where they were doing fine because they were doing whatever they thought was good, like Shazam, the Joker. So, and then obviously all their sequels came out, Wonder Woman and Shazam 2, which I don't hate Shazam 2. And I think it's a Shazam 2 is not a bad movie. It's just such a disappointment from the first movie in my opinion because the first movie's so strong and this one's just like it's good but like not great yeah. and then just they just did not market it well whatsoever so it well, just it dc brings up a really good point too where we've talked about this blue beetle which is their official it's like blue beetle and then aquaman but blue beetle is actually gonna be like the beginning of whatever and let me tell you right now the trailer no one's gonna see it it looks fun. It doesn't look cringy. It looks cool. It looks like a good mix of people and this and this. It looks yeah, like we a love comic George book movie. It looks like a comic book movie. Does it look bad or anything? No, I actually think it looks pretty all right. But it just looks like a comic movie. And I think that's For something that was supposed Batman. to go to HBO Max. You know. It was supposed to go to HBO Max because that was the same thing with Batgirl. And I'm like, I'm watching the trailer and I'm going... This looks all right, but it just looks like a comic book movie where it's like it's Green Lantern. There's like some Shang Chi energy. There's like there's like a bunch of we like because it's clearly the you know Latino superhero, but he's in like an Iron Man suit. There's like some Moon Knight stuff in there. And again, I'm not saying this ignorantly because I understand we live in a world where like like The Giver was a book that inspired Hunger Games. The Giver movie comes out after all the Hunger Games and people go, they're just copying the Hunger Games. It's like, no, but the this is the same thing where the comic might have came out before all these, but you watch the movie trailer and you go, okay, yeah, it just looks like all this other stuff. So like you said, I do agree with the whole, it seems like Superman is involved. And then I'm telling you right now, they just need to leave Batman alone. Don't do another Batman. And I think, honestly, just let Matt Reeves do what he's doing. Once they're done, then do Batman. Because I think it is... Too gonna... bad. We're getting Batman, the brave and the bold. I'm bringing in Damien. And it's we like... don't get Nightwing in a movie. We get Damien for Nightwing. And then people want Robert to be in the... I'm like, no. No. Stop it. Stop, Stop it. it. Get some There's help. something in the way. It's a brick wall. Man. And then like re and the Batman, which is the weird exception, because that was during the day where they're like, just do whatever you want. Um, I recently oh. saw it with a live orchestra with my dad recently. And I'm telling oh. you, dude, that's not like a weird flex, but okay moment. That's just me saying I I finally watched it again recently. And let me tell you, dude. God, this that movie is fucking awesome. Like, it's so good. And I'm watching it again with all of these people that said about how long it is and how there's like weird plot holes. In the, and I'm watching it and I'm just like, like, you know what part I was nervous to watch again was the Batmobile sequence. Because I remember watching it the first time going, so he did all this. But the penguin's not even the bag. Like he's not involved. Okay, but whatever. Watching it again, it actually makes a little more sense. Like I think it's more spelled out than we thought. Because originally watching it, you're like, "Wow, he's just trying to make a citizen's arrest," and then it doesn't even go anywhere. <laughs> but that movie is so strong, and it just makes me feel like again, that is why I love when comic book movies can be their own thing is when it just feels like it's the, it, it exists in its own world because then it, it gets to just do its own thing because when it's connected to everything else, it then feels like this chaos and you have to include this. Whereas like you can have Batman be in his own Batman world and he has to deal with all this stuff because then the moment you include him in like, justice league he then has to go off and he's doing all these other things where we could be doing more batman stuff and it's like there's like a whole conundrum there but yeah and then you just even throw in todd phillips and then you get 
Joker, baby. And now Joker 2 does Lady of Goo Goo. We live in a society. We live in a society where Lady Gaga might possibly win for Harley Quinn. <laughs> but, We're going to have Joaquin Phoenix sing. The problem with the Batman and Joker really was, damn, like these did good. They got critical acclaim and people actually think they're wonderful. We can't do anything. We're not going to fuck that up. We're just going to let them do whatever. It's like the, really the Jokers, it's like own, own thing. Like that was a whole nother weird experiment. But like the Batman is definitely fuck. Well, we're not going to include him in our universe. But, like, we're not going to stop them, which makes me nervous that they will. Like, at some point, they're just going to go, no, fuck it, we're done. Um, But, yeah, that's kind of the only casualty of the old school DC method. They're like, well, shit, the Batman stuck. So now where do where do we go from there? <laughs> where do we go now? But then we get to The Flash, which Eric didn't like it. I was fine with it. But again, this movie doesn't matter. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't fucking matter in any shape or form because it's not performing well. This whole Batman Beyond thing, which honestly, I don't know. I really feel like that's a rumor because why all of a sudden, like, why is this secretly part of a James Gunn plan? Or is this a Warner Brother? Like, that whole thing seems odd to me, like. I don't think James Gunn was going to do that like because it seemed very clear that this was just going to kind of cap it and now it seems very clear we don't have to worry about Ezra being in DC not because they do terrible things but because their movie bombed is, so, yeah is bombing so DC is kind of at that point now where you know Aquaman 2 is it going to succeed like Blue Beetle I think will do fine because of when it comes out it's in August it has a lot of open, you know, who knows if the Barb, ba Barbenheimer, is that how you say? Yeah, the Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer. They keep going until then. Um, but Blue Beetle, I feel like we'll do fine. It'll be like 30. I see a 30 million opening. It's like one of those, it's not, it's not going to do amazing, but I don't see it doing poorly because there's a lot about it that I think could work. And it's a demographic that I think people are excited about, you know? And Aquaman 2 is Aquaman 2. So then after that, you kind of have to go from there. And then, you know, the one thing I just forgot about too, we haven't even talked about like the CW shows and like the Netflix shows and how that all, but like to think Smallville was the show that started yeah. this whole wave of comic book TV is fucking wild to me. Um, God, yeah, see, this conversation will go on forever, but that's not why, that's why we're not going to bring up everything, everything. But yeah, so DC kind of just got fucked because Nolan did Nolan, and then they just kept fucking around, and then they didn't know what to do, and then they were doing tax write-offs, and then The Rock was going to change the DCU forever until oh, James yeah. said no. Even though Black Adam outperformed Shazam 2 and Flash, which I'm not going to lie, like, whether or not I like or dislike whatever, the fact that Black Adam performed that well makes me go like, it's like the I first question. Suicide Squad all over again. Like, oh, society, what are we doing? Well, it's okay. It didn't perform well enough that, you know, they were going to be like, let's keep the rock around. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, Spider-Verse seems to be, but see, again, like you said Spider-Verse, and again, the thumbnail has Flash, Guardians 3, and Spider-Verse on it. Spider-Verse, I think, is just a rare gem of, like, again, like, we talk about TMNT. I'm super stoked for this movie. Like, it, I love that they're taking the Spider-Verse style. They're overworking all of their people to death, which that yeah, was we'll the see story. It. We were so excited about how wonderful and artistic it was until we learned that capitalism exists. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, we'll see if they hit that March release date but from this point on the recording they have not delayed part three yet um I'm, but let's be i real. told jade i said don't think this is going to get pushed to 2025 expect like probably it, end of 2025 early 2026 because i don't want these people being overworked 
we're not doing this. <laughs> I could see it coming out the end of next year at the latest. We'll have They're to. gonna want it out because it's already been, you know, it's already been filmed and everything because everything was done at once. It was just let's get the animation done and well. We know how well Spider Punk was animated and seeing how crazy that, that was. Who knows what the fuck they're putting in this next one? Well, he is, he shows up, so he'll be there. He will be there. Yeah. And Nicolas Cage will be back. Nicolas Cage will be back. John Mulaney will be back. Oh boy. I see the Spider Verse movies again. I think those are the way to get out of your cynical nature. You watch them. They're their own thing. You go, wow, this is so wonderful. And then you kind of sit down for a while and then you just go. But Secret Invasion exists. The Flash exists. You know, like yeah, it's going to be done. And then you reflect and you go, wow, the same studio that's putting out these quality of movies is also bringing us Craven the Hunter and Morbius. <laughs> And then that's and then again, that's the whole other thing where Sony wants to make money off of making their Spider-Man villains good people. And guess what? No more bad bunny as El Muerto. I'm so upset. Yeah, that would literally the whole reason that movie existed was to put bad bunny as El Muerto. You know, the guy that existed for three issues. Yeah. Or something. You know, now who knows? Oh, it's okay. What we're we gonna get. Venom 3. If you haven't seen the movie, mute your microphones and I'll do it again once the spoiler's over. Hypnos is probably not fun. happening anymore because everyone got excited for Prowler being in it, Donald Glover, and they're like, oh, we yeah. should try and do something with him, actually, finally. We probably, so. yeah. Maybe who, maybe who knows? Maybe in uh, Spider-Man 4. We'll see. The Prowler. Yeah. Act. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what's going on. Spoiler over! <laughs> Well, yeah, so, I mean, Spider-Verse, I don't even think could be included in the conversation because it's just so odd because it's just their movies that exist. And I remember when the first one was announced and, like, we saw trailers, I just remember being like, okay, like, this looks, like, I'm excited. And then it came out and it wasn't performing well, but I remember seeing it that weekend and just going, like, a breath of fresh air. You know, and I, mean, I wonder what I would happen if that movie came out now, because at that time we were still in, we were just done with Infinity War. We were in the sadness of, oh my God, what just happened? And then this movie comes we out. We were in a Spider-Man resonance in the time, technically, too, because that was the same year that, the, you know, PS4 game came out. So yeah. we're like, oh, and we were like, oh my God, oh. How about this? Just make good stuff. Then we won't have. Yeah, at the end of the day, end of the day, that's what we're asking is just we want quality products that are spent with time and care, not you know needing to be set out for a market because you know your fan base will eat it up. No, because your fan base at the end of the day will catch on, and it seems like for a lot of these companies it already has. Yeah. I mean, for DC, it never really did for this DC EU. Give us good content. Give us different kinds of content. Uh, who you, knows? you know who gives you good content? The Warren Rascals. You, do. you should like, comment, subscribe, you know, uh, do all that fun stuff. Let us know. Are you, are you tired? Are you, what do you, what do you want from a comic book movies? Are, is there anything you're excited for? Cause to be honest, I just want the Daredevil show at this point, but only because I'm just interested. And then what's going to happen is it'll be okay. And I'll just go, well, I'm upset. I'm over. <laughs> but yeah, let us know. Honestly, finishing this conversation off, I like that we tend to not be structured. I know a lot of people may not like that, but I think it's just more interesting to just discuss how we got here. <laughs> You may have wondered how I ended up in this situation. Well, one of mom and dad love each other very much. Then they realize that uh, they actually don't love each other. And then they get separated and realize mom wants to be with another mom and dad wants to be with another dad. Where are you going with this? Toodaloo! Toodaloo! Toodaloo!